Hi, everyone. Welcome to the second episode of Track Talk. My name is Sam Baker. I'm Jessica Benavides. And today we're talking to Jack Polito. He's 19 years old, but has 16 years of racing experience all the way when he was back racing snowmobiles. He's now racing a GT4 Mustang in the SCCC. Today we're going to talk about sponsorship, his experience coming up through the ranks in 1600. He's got a great personality, he's a funny kid, and we really hope you enjoy the conversation. Today's guest is a 14-time Canadian National Snowmobile Champion. He started racing snowmobiles when he was three. He got into cars when he was 15. He's now 19. Rookie of the Year in F1600. Welcome to Track Talk, Jack Polito. What's going on? How are you guys doing today? Pretty good, pretty good. Good to see you. I know we just saw you last week at the auto show. That was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, I meant to ask you, um, do you feel that being there was valuable for you as a driver? Oh, absolutely. No, it was, I enjoyed it so much because I'm, I'm, I like people. That's just my thing. I really like people and meeting people. So it was a great experience and definitely next year would want to do some more time down there for sure. I know I just mentioned the intro, you won your first race in a Honda Prelude. I didn't know about that. Could you kind of talk about what series that was in and, and what you're driving? Yeah, absolutely. So that was, uh, originally that car was entered in GT5. And uh, I, it was just, I had never driven a car before. I had never been in a car before, like race racing wise. So I started out in a Focus ST to get my license. So I got my license. That was the first thing. And then I just, we went right into the first weekend. So I was running in a Prelude, a 1997 Prelude. And uh, originally we thought it was a GT5 car. And the fastest that car had gone was a 137. And throughout the practice, I did a 136. So, or no, I had done like a 139. So I blew out of GT5, which is a minute and 40 for bracket racing. So we went straight into GT4, which was a minute and 35 breakout. And uh, I ended up winning that race and I beat the car's record by two seconds. I did a minute and 35.25 in that car, which was a lot of fun. And I took that race home and it actually started to rain near the end of the race. So that's how I won because the Volkswagen that I was racing was really fast on the back straight. Not like I was so slow, but in the corners, that's where I made up. And uh, because it was raining, the guy couldn't go wide open. So I got to uh, let load on my front wheel drive beast. When was that, Jack? I would. I was fifteen. So that was your first year. Oh, so that was before sixteen hundred. Yeah, that I did that, and then I the next year I went into sixteen hundred. I only drove that car one time. And only took once, won your first race. Yeah. Yeah, it was actually pretty sweet. You're natural. Yeah, I like to think so. Can I try and fix my uh, phone real quick? Yeah, <laughs> just explain what it. Just explain what's going on here, please. <laughs> okay, so. I wanted to get a professional. I wanted to be in like a good spot. So I'm currently uh, duct tape my phone to a simulator steering wheel. And because I'm in a race or it just loaded into a test track. So it kind of jerked the wheel and the, the camera's coming out of here. It should be good. Wow. Should be good. So um, what did you do? What'd you get up to in the winter? So actually this winter was very nice for me. So usually I am racing stone wheels full time. I'm practicing three to four times a week in Bracebridge so it's an hour and a half commute there and back so I my winters have always been very consumed by this snow cross thing because I I rode at a pro level I started I went to pro two years ago it was just so much like so much time dedicated to snowmobiling and working out it was just a full-time job whereas in this year because I'm going I'm growing up a lot right now I'm I've just got my OMVIC last year I started selling cars for my dad and I'm trying to do a lot more management stuff around the group. Sorry to cut you off, Jack. Can you just explain what that is? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. The OMVIC is, uh, so in order to sell uh, cars in Ontario, you need to have your OMVIC. It's like that for other states too, except I believe Manitoba, you don't need a license to sell cars there. So yeah, that's what that is. And you can get that at 18 and you don't need to go to school for it. All you need to do is pay a fee. You get the textbook and you write the test. It's pretty cool. So you're growing up now, you got your OMVIC, and now you're starting to sell cars at the dealership. Yeah, exactly. So my winter, because of that, I kind of decided last year that it'd be my last year in snowcross, which was sad, but I still have sleds. I can still go ride. I know, I know like pro riders who own tracks, so they invite me up, of course, so I can go do that. I haven't done it yet this year, which kind of a little bummed out about, but 
I've been I've been skiing and I started skiing at the beginning of the year and snowboarding this year. So I replaced it with something sort of. So it's been a, it's been a lot of fun. I've been doing that. Went up to I drove up to Quebec a couple times this year and it's been a lot of fun for sure. What made you make that decision out of curiosity? Is it's so it's so it's so stressful and my with my dad getting older he wants to he just bought a place in Mexico believe it or not and he doesn't want to be in Mexico like he's been celebrating his birthday in the winter for the past 10 years for me so we're growing up we're, we want to do different things right it's it'll always be a part of me for sure and I'll still ride sleds I'm sure it's just uh it's a, it's a job right and it doesn't necessarily I don't get too much out of it right so I'm trying to go to the things that are going to get me far in life. And especially like with the summers filled up racing now too, it's got to be nice to kind of take a break. Exactly. Well, that's the thing too. I don't feel like it's gone. To... I don't feel like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay, I don't feel like uh, my racing is like gone to a degree because I still get to race, right? Like cars. They don't cover the camera. <laughs> <laughs> a few moments later you said that um racing snowcross is super demanding on your body yeah very demanding so are you going to be doing anything this year to um, prepare yourself physically or mentally absolutely so for sure the mental mental side of it you need to be sleeping a lot that's you need to be you need to have energy in order to race a car i find if you're deprived and you're tired you're not going to get your best out of that and that's a really big thing you can't be tired and uh i work out every day too so that's like on the physical side i'm always doing stuff so i stay fit like that wise that way sorry and and now you're going to be sim using your sim all the time yeah it's going to be a lot of fun i'm excited to start using it more are you going to put a nice setup at your new place i'm actually just going to completely remove that setup from my old room and bring it to my house i'm putting it right in my living room i'm going to be able to walk in from work hop in i'm going racing <laughs> Love it. Do you do a lot of eye racing? Yeah, I'm still in rookie everything. I just got it up and running last week. So what do you use like to practice during the season? Like, do you do anything specific? Not really. Like, I just wait and I get the green flag. You're racing this weekend. And I'm like, all right, let's go. Like, it's nothing. It's nothing really too thought out, honestly. Like, it's, it's just go have fun. What about like when you're on the false grid and, you know, you usually have to wait like five, 10 minutes before you can actually go and you're just strapped in, you can't move. I find sometimes that's, that's the part I hate most about it because you start stressing yourself out, but you have to just empty your mind. Like when you're sitting there, what are you thinking about? Are you doing anything to kind of loosen up? People are always, people always laugh at me on the line because I'm just that I'm always like, I'll sleep in the car <laughs> until we're ready to go. And then it's green and I'm awake and ready to go. Like, I'm honestly pretty relaxed. I get butterflies right as soon as uh, we're all gritting up, coming around eight usually, like Mossport wise, but they all disappear like pretty quick. I just get that little feeling. I think definitely with Snowcross, that's helped a lot for sure. Yeah. And F1600s, that was huge. I'll never forget my first race. I qualified like fourth or something or whatever, sixth or whatever. And I'm, I'll never forget, like everyone was getting so close to each other and I was like, holy shit, like, because my first or I never really done anything like that, but that definitely helped with racing cr close for sure. If you could race in any motorsport era from the past, what would it be, and what type of series or car? Does it have to be from the past? No, yeah, it doesn't have to be from the past. I definitely like like I'm. I've always like one thing I always really liked was rally racing. I'm just not too familiar with the series, but. uh Definitely like any form, definitely in the newer era, I would say, to lengthen my chance of survival. But uh, <laughs> or, would you be doing like like stage rallies or like rally cross? Like rally cross for sure. Rally cross. Yeah, I like that a lot. It looks sick. Can you guys explain the difference to me? What's rally cross and rally stage? Rally stage is like a distance and rally cross is through a track and it can change terrain too. Stages can be like back roads in Finland, and they're like basically go point A to B. I see. Honestly, like both. I like both styles. Yeah, yeah, they're both work a lot. Yeah, 
It looks scary, but that's what I like about it. It looks a lot of fun. I was just going to say, like, some of the stuff I've seen with, like, Rally is just, I don't know. I get it makes me anxious just watching. You shouldn't watch a motorcycle race then. Yeah, that's even scarier. Down in, what is it, Australia? They have that one race. Oh, uh, it. Um... They do, like, 300 kilometers an hour. And, like, a, a couple people die every year doing it. Oh, are you talking about the Isle of Man, the TT? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. That's in uh, the UK. But yeah. Oh, it's the UK. Yeah, sorry. No, that is, I think, the most wild. Yeah, that's crazy. No, I would never want to do that style of yeah. I like my life. Um, who's a uh, a well known driver out there that you might compare yourself to? Could be personality, your driving style, either or. Maybe not personality, but a a driver I like. I don't know, Kyle Marcelli. He's a really well known driver, but uh, I've always found like we have a similar driving style to a degree. But personality-wise, I feel like I get a lot of it from my dad. I can totally see that. Your dad's very personal, and he's such a jokester, too. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Although, dad, I don't know about our driving. I've told our driving style is a little bit different from new. Like, you mean you and your dad? Yeah, my dad's old-fashioned. <laughs> and I'm just... Does that just mean, like, the handling was, like, way more difficult back in the day? Okay. Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, no, no power steering back when when he was raised. No. That kind of leads into the next question, I guess. So, describe your relationship with your team. Like, is there anything you rely heavily on, whether it's setting up the car? What What could you? What do you do, or they do at the track that you can do without? That's honestly one of the funnier things too. I find because uh, we've got probably one of the smaller, small, smallest teams in GT4, but honestly, it's great. We don't think about everything too much. The car's set up, and that's how it's set up. Like, we we don't do too many changes. If we notice something small, we might change something, but very rarely are we changing the car. And we got a small team. We got a couple of mechanics, Paul and Bart, and uh, my godfather Jim usually comes and supports, and my dad's there, and that's our team. It's pretty uh small, but it gets the job done. We'll sometimes have more people, but. I want to talk to you a bit about racing the rain quick because I remember when we were racing back in 1600 and you telling me after a race at Shannonville, like, man, I just, I can't, I can't figure out the wet, dude. It just, I cannot get it. And then last year, Calabogie, your second race in the Mustang, you came out and had an unreal race in the rain. I think you're second for most of it, finished third. So what, like, what clicked? What, what kind of, how do you figure it out? I think one of the biggest problems with me was when i raced the prelude it was front wheel this is a little bit off topic but when i raced the prelude there was a couple days i or sorry there was one day it was complete rain and i was fine never had an issue right like until i got into the 1600s and they don't have a rain tire right so i think what happened was is it completely lowered my confidence (laughs) because the car to me just became a lot less unpredictable i found i don't know that was just the way I thought of it but then as soon as I got back in the Mustang it kind of restored my confidence like I could feel I could feel a lot better I felt like in that car than I could in the 1600 because one thing you're going and the next thing you're hydroplaning and you're doing 360s right that didn't happen too much but uh, it happened definitely one of the practices yeah I think I think I remember yeah coming I was following Jonathan on the back back straight at Mossport started hydroplaning did a 360 I came around and I just had just a little bit too moment too much momentum, and it just kept going to another one eighty right into the right right side of the wall. Are those like shifter cars, like the radicals are? Radical have shifters? Or are they paddles? No, they have paddles. They're paddles. Yeah, they're four feet. Oh, okay. They're the sixteen hundreds. Yeah, like like the TCA car. The TCA has a uh, stick shift, six speed. Yeah, they have a dog box too. Just so. You just have to put the clutch in for first, and then every other gear you can lift, and it'll go in. I know some drivers would lift, but I will. I will. Okay, so now we'll jump into the hot lap questions here. So these are going to be rapid fire. Just uh, I'll throw out the question. You give me the answer. We'll move on to the next one kind of thing. So first question, do you prefer oversteer or understeer for the setup? Understeer. Okay, you got to kind of elaborate on that one a bit because that's a rare answer, I feel. Or actually, no, definitely oversteer. I don't know what I'm saying. I like it, I <laughs> like it when the back end's a little bit more controlled. Okay. Um, what's most important? Do you corner entry, apex, or exit? Exits. Exits are the most important thing. So I'm told an F1600, and that's how you get your best speed, whatever. 
But I love entrances. I like coming in hot, that's for sure. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, what's your bucket list track to drive worldwide? I don't have a track necessarily, but one thing I always wanted to do was take my dad to uh, the Autobahn. Oh, yeah. I thought that would be something like, that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, that's a good answer. What car are you renting? Ford GT all the way. Are you kidding? <laughs> Of course. Represent. <laughs> no, there are definitely some tracks I would really like to drive at, like uh, Daytona. Like, that would be really cool. Yeah. Or or uh, Watkins Glen, too. That would be a lot of fun. Yeah, that's an awesome one. Um, how about bucket list event to attend as a fan? I think the Las – like, any of the Formula One races, like the Las Vegas one, not until I'm 21, of course, but I feel like that would be pretty insane or something – Toronto Windy was honestly really all I had a great experience at that event too. But I've already attended that before. But like yeah, just some style of open wheel indie or Formula One, I think. Or or a rally films. You never know. So all right, we're firing up the Wii. What Mario Kart character are you playing? Oh, this is so easy. I've had the same I was laughing so hard when I saw this question. I've had the same guy the whole time. Toad. You know what guy that is? Yeah, yeah. Toad? This little mushroom cap guy. That's my guy right there. He's the lightest. Yeah. So build off that. Um, if you could use one Mario Kart like power up in real life, what would you use? Oh yeah. I was debating between the two. So you only get one, like that big rocket guy. You only get that when you're really far back, right? But if you could get that at the front, that would just be domination or the gold star. Just like nah, nah, nah. you know, just hit it. Not gonna be, be golden, literally. Yeah. No, you're you're smart. You're you're focused on winning, not destroying the other competitors. The rocket guy is the best one though. He like makes everybody shrink too, so that <laughs> they fall behind. Actually, that would be a good one. Like the squid one. You know what one that is? That like puts ink on the driver's paper. That would be a good one too. Actually, I just thought of that. Yeah, I would not like that going down. Or how about it just puts oil in front of your tires? Yeah, oil, oil. <laughs> that was actually pretty good jess <laughs> it sounded just like it oh you're up playing way too much mario kart okay uh now we're gonna do some more personal stuff <clears throat> so who is the most influential person in your life and why definitely my dad my dad's taught me a lot practically everything i know and he's given me every single every single thing i've had my dad's like helped me achieve, you know, like this ride, for example, GT4, it wouldn't have been possible without my dad. So it's just, he's such a, he, he grew from nothing practically. So I just, I really look up to him and he's taught me a lot for sure. And he's going to teach me a lot more in the future. So. Mm. Yeah. Like I said, Anthony's a very likable person and you're definitely following in his footsteps. You're, you're natural when it comes to people. I saw that I'm at trying. the auto show. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So do you have an opinion um, about the importance of the dealership's involvement um, with the racing? I think it's freaking awesome because when I have customers, I get to go, do you guys want to see our Polito racing shop? And they go, what's that? And I explain to them and they go, you guys have, it's, it's just, I'm so happy that we're involved and it's at the dealership too. It's attached Polito racing. It's so nice to have. And yeah, it's, I love it. It's freaking awesome. It brings a different aspect to the dealership too for employees and such because we have all these cool exotic race cars and it makes the job definitely a bit more interesting for sure. I think it makes the dealership more interesting too, for sure. Do you guys ever bring like the Mustang out onto the showroom at all? We've done that once or twice, but uh, yeah, we always have different stuff in the show. Okay. I'm going to let my dog out. Jeez. This guy's freaking 14 years old. He's an old man. My dog's an old man. <laughs> he's got, when he's got to go, he's got to go. No, that's the worst part. He doesn't. He'll be back at the door in 30 seconds. <laughs> so we touched on this a bit earlier, but how do you think racing snowmobiles your whole life like helped impact getting into cars and making that transition easier? Definitely just being in a racing atmosphere, similar stuff going on. Like there are not necessarily as many politics, but there are definitely politics like parents, all this stuff. It's, it's the same, but it's not, you know what I mean? It's the same style. It's racing. It's competitive. It's all that goodness. Everyone wants to win, but uh, now I just substitute with like really expensive race cars. So how about from the, the car control side of things? Because I know like, look at like Gilles Villeneuve, one of the most famous F1 drivers ever. He started on sleds. 
do you find like you have a better understanding of the balance of the car and, and stuff what's underneath you when you're out there definitely over the years it's definitely gotten a lot better i noticed a lot more little things i'd say but uh i wouldn't say too much because with a sled i find what it was was just body weight so where your center of gravity is like where your weight's going to be on the sled weight distribution on a sled's the most important thing because that's how you don't crash right whereas in a car it's all in the wheel and feeling so it's similar but not really not really i would i wouldn't say too much but you're going fast and you got to make precision turns so kind of yeah so tell us the story about how you started racing last year for the series. Just I'm just curious myself because I know it was kind of mid season. Anthony started the season off, and then it's actually uh, so I always wondered that. My dad wanted me to be in that car. I think since we get, he's always wanted me to be in that car, but we weren't sure when I was gonna be ready for the car, right? Because it's quite a car. But so at the beginning of the year, my dad has some um, '66 Shelby Mustangs uh race cars too and they're really fast i'm doing like 280 on the back straight which is a little bit faster than the gt4 cars anyways they put me in that to see how i would do they put a different uh computer in it and within like the second or first practice sorry i come off i'm like why am i hitting the limit coffee okay yeah, i'm gonna go upstairs because my phone is 12 seconds later so that was during the vintage festival and uh, I raced that and I won. I did. I won that. So that was pretty awesome. So my dad was happy with that. And right as he bought the blue Mustang, he bought a, and sorry, I just ran up the stairs. He, he bought an orange one. And the difference between this car was roughly like six to five seconds. We weren't sure, but because it's not a multi-matic built Mustang, so it's not the same. Plus, this car was standard. So they put me in this car, and we hadn't sure, we weren't sure what time it was going to be. Originally, we thought it was a GT3 car, but after practice, I had done a GT2 time, and I ended up racing in GT2. And I, I believe I won in GT2 in that car, too. But uh, after that, my dad was like, okay, like you've proved enough. So I'll let you do a test day in the car. And by the first test out i had already gone faster than my dad had gone so he was like okay <laughs> all right and uh yeah and then he said okay i want you to do calabogie and uh yeah the rest is that the rest is there were you stoked <laughs> are you kidding yeah absolutely i was obviously nervous too because the cars it's pretty funny like at first i was really nervous like being in the car and stuff but after you do a lap and that it just goes away. You know what I mean? You can't think about how nice the car is. You just got to drive it. Yeah. You're having too much fun to think about that stuff anyways, probably. <laughs> Try to. So do you use social media right now for, for racing or have you in the past? And if so, what are some of the challenges that you would say that you experience with social media? Definitely. The biggest thing I'd find was making edits and getting uh, the sound canceled uh what's that called uh what's it called when like copyright yeah copyright like so that was definitely my biggest i'd post something and it'd get copyrighted but uh i would say i'm not really too worried about getting us out there like my style wise like or sorry for our brand like i'm not worried about views and stuff i just like to make the po i post on tiktok under my personal account with our racing stuff but right now we just got a new media person at Plato. So we're slowly getting her to do the racing. And then this year, I've already been talking to people who maybe can do some edits and stuff for our Clio Ford. What are you looking the most forward to uh, in the 2023 season? This might sound weird, but I'm excited to race at uh, Toronto Windy. I'm, I'm just excited to try some different track. I'm, I'm just excited to have fun this year. That's all I want. I just want to have fun this year and just to be in the car in general that's going to be enough. Right. So yeah, it's a lot of fun. I want to, I want to do well this year too, obviously, but I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited. I just want to have fun and we'll see how the year goes. Just out of curiosity, have you ever raced any of the, Sam, you might have to help me with this question. Um, closed circuit. Is that when the walls are up? Oh, like street circuit. Yeah. Have you ever run a street circuit? The closest thing I can say to a street circuit I've ran 
was corner one in Calabogie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just two walls. It's just two walls. It's a big wall, though. Yeah, one time in the rain. I did a 360 going into one. At Calabogie? Yeah, and I, I, I don't – this is one thing I really wish I kept, the videos, all that video stuff. Jonathan Woolridge was my teammate, and I didn't even bring a computer. Like, they would always be down – analyzing footage and all that stuff but i was just hanging out you know so they would he would store some of my stuff but that clip i'll never forget i go into corner one brian grant's like it's flat jack i'm like all right it's flat all right here we go like it's just starting to rain so that was kind of my downfall i spun out i did a three i've done a 360 at every track which is not a good <laughs> thing but it's not bad thing. Clip, clip i kept that. it i kept it off the wall you know but uh I never like crashed like that. Like I haven't. Anyways, I stopped within a foot of the wall in Calabogie. Jeez. Oh my goodness. Like it, it just came around, and I just kept going. Like as in nothing happened. It was awesome. Oh my goodness. Yeah, you're gonna have to get get on the sim. I don't know whether it's luck or sk- professional crashing skills. I don't know. This this might sound really weird, but with sleds, I found like when I would crash. I'd be going pretty fast, so it crashed usually really hard. And I found over the years, I learned how to, like, fall. Yeah. So I wouldn't hurt myself. And I don't know. I feel like I'm pretty good at saving. Say something would happen to the car or whatever. I'm pretty good at saving the car in that aspect. Because if it was – I feel like if it was a lot of other people, they would have went right into the wall, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. I'd stay calm. That's the thing. I'm not like, oh, shit. I'm just like, Okay. All right. Yeah, well, that's the thing. You're not. You're 19, and you have 16 years of experience. You know what I mean? Like that. That's pretty impressive. I don't know how many of those year of those beginning years on sleds I'll remember, but <laughs> I started sure back then. What's uh? What's your favorite aspect of the class you're racing in? So GT4. I love the cor- I don't know the corner speed. I like the. I just like that car cornering is so so nice. Like. I like how close it is for sure too. It's close. Yeah. I like how close it is. It's close racing. I don't know. It's just that car. I get to drive that car. That's what I like about it. You know what I mean? I'm driving a Multimatic Mustang. That's doesn't get too much better. Than that. Do you have any goals this year? Uh, have fun. Minimize damage. Those are great goals. Those are great goals for real. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, just be clean. I just want to have a great year. Honestly, that's my goal. My biggest goal: have a fun, great year. Do you got any sort of things you're really looking to work on going into the season, like specific to your driving, maybe? Yeah, I, I was thinking about this earlier. Like one thing, as you were saying with the rain, that because it was my first time in the car. Like I want to get. I want it to be a. When it's dry, I'm always like, yes, let's go. And then when it's rain, I'm always like, eh. But I, I just want to – I think this year I'll be able to lock it down a bit more. Like I said, I think F1600 has kind of ruined my confidence a little bit too much because – anyways, but I think hopefully this year I'll regain, regain that back. So in the rain, I'm just as sharp. What about um, sponsorship? Do you have any experience obtaining sponsorship or, or talking to sponsors, or is this kind of a little early still? Absolutely. Well, we didn't get that Multimatic car for doing nothing, that's for sure. But uh, my dad had some really good connections that way. That's how uh, we were even eligible to possibly buy that car. But uh, definitely Multimatic. They've been a huge help. But I wouldn't say necessarily from me, like, or sorry, because of me, more of it because of my dad. But uh, that's been a huge sponsorship for us. And then, of course, all of it's all of this racing is funded by Polito Racing and Polito. So that's my biggest sponsorship right now. And it wasn't too hard to get that, but uh, definitely had to work for it a little bit. How about in, in Snowcross? Do you have any partners that you'd work with exclusively there? Yeah, so I was a, I was a factory team rider for, for Skidoo. So I was on their website and I was a paid rider for Skidoo. I think that ended this year, sadly. So that's kind of unfortunate, but... Uh, yeah, Skidoo was definitely my biggest one. And then another really big one was Enzo Shocks. The the pro rider, there's the state series, which is called ISOC. That's where Snowcross is at its all-time peak. Like, it's huge over there. Ishul, who won the pro championship last year, has Enzo Shocks. No one else has Enzo Shocks. Jordan LaBelle, who won the pro light championship last year, who's my buddy, 
has Enzo shocks. No one else has Enzo shocks. It's like uh, they're pretty hard to get, but because uh, in Valcourt, Quebec, that's where the Skidoo factory is, and that's where all the Skidoo's are made. So for a Skidoo rider, that's where you want to be your best, kind of. And uh, they definitely caught – I caught their eye, and uh, that's how I got that. They actually came to us, and uh, those shocks are not cheap. I wouldn't say that uh, – they sponsored us by giving us shocks. You still got to pay for them, but they gave us the uh, they gave us the option to go with them, right? So that was that was enough in general. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, I'm just I'm just curious. So right now has been a little bit of a struggle for some teams looking for sponsorship and stuff. So I was just wondering, um, like if you have any sort of advice to give to maybe up and coming drivers going through Formula Sixteen looking for sponsorship definitely being able to display like what you like what you are you know what i mean and what is going on and having the most accurate outcome on what's happened like throughout the years how well you've done and all that stuff and your achievements i think that'll best bet like all your sponsorships as well as personal connections too knowing people can help huge knowing the right person can really make an effort so marketing like meeting people and that's a really big big key for sure. So how so basically what you're saying, how you portray yourself, networking with the people that you already know, and um just marketing yourself, right? Yeah, to the to the best. Good answer. Describe your proudest moment in your racing career. Uh so okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna stick to sixteen hundreds for this one. When I won the uh Can Am Cup at Calabogi, that was probably one of my proudest moments. Not because I won. Oh, I did not anyways i won for brian graham it was so special because brian graham had recently lost someone who had started i believe the can-am cup it was he was a really big involvement and i got to bring that trophy home to him the year he, it was pretty it was a really special moment for sure that's probably one of my proudest moments that was a really good day yeah remember you had a great race to that run you started a bit behind and you made your way through yeah yeah, yeah it was a good race that track can be a pain sometimes. Yeah. Dude, you had that track, though. I remember, like, because that was my first weekend there, too, and I was struggling with it. And then right from the get-go, you were, like, with Jonathan and uh, – was it Gilks that year? Or... Yeah, it was Nick. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you had figured it out pretty quick because it is a tough track. Do you have any sort of advice to give to um, younger drivers coming up through the ranks, just like you did coming out of formula 1600 doing karting um, about how to just, you know, keep, keep their careers going and, and elevating their personal brand. I'd say definitely being a humble driver, you know, like not thinking you're better than everyone. Cause that's not necessarily true. And cause you might be better at something doesn't mean you're better at everything. You know what I mean? So just staying humble and being willing to learn new things because there's lots of new stuff that you don't know about that you can learn about. And uh, yeah, I'd say just being humble on the track too. Like it goes all around. Like sometimes that extra position, you know, like it's worth it. Some, I don't know. It all depends. It depends the scenario and everything that's going on, but uh, definitely just trying to just be a, a tame like driver you don't want to be that guy that's known for destroying the cars and taking out the drivers right so definitely just driving within your limits and uh being respectful yeah respectful on track yeah <laughs> yeah absolutely. yeah that's a huge thing to end it off though we do like to give like this is a plug shout out space kind of floor is yours anything you got going on anyone specific you want to shout out shout out to uh multimatic canada or multimatic for the best car and the best gt4 mustang ever created as well as polito ford lincoln and lindsay ontario if you're ever stopping through lindsay ontario make sure to come see polito ford i might be there you never know i'm a salesman there but i'm currently in school till august so there's a little window of me not being there but uh Come say hi. You can come see our race shop possibly. If you buy a car, you never know. And uh, yeah, that's really about it. Where can people follow you online, um, Jack? Yeah, so my Instagram's underscore at Jack Polito. And uh, our Instagram for our store is just uh, Polito Ford Lincoln. And we have Polito Racing too. If you type up Polito, there should be a few accounts. Um, okay, guys, thanks for watching. Jack, thanks for um, being so honest and uh 
we got to get you in three different rooms there. <laughs> Meet your dogs and your cats. <laughs> that was good. That was fun. That was a great interview. Um, and I think that, you know, the viewers are going to get a lot of value out of the things that you had shared with us. And uh, just for anybody kind of looking at at uh, these driver announcements um if you're interested in leave, asking some questions for our future drivers please make sure to follow us on social media on youtube and reach out when we announce um future drivers no problem thank you guys so much for having me you guys have a great day you too jack all right we'll see you at the track soon still going bad on you anyway whoa 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 whoa, whoa. I can feel like 80 rats in my memories. Me and Drizzy back to back is getting scary.